Muslim army. But reports exist about this. We have reports about him for when, when, when uh, a companion of the Prophet, a great companion of the Prophet, Abu Ghar, was exiled by Uthman. Uh, and Uthman and Marwan said to the Muslims that we are sending him out. No one should go and see him off. Nonetheless, Aqil and Abdullah bin Jafar and Ali alayhi salam and Al Hassan and Al Hussein went to see him off. And uh, Marwan came to see who it is who is disobeying the Uthman here. And uh, he says to Al Hassan ibn Ali alayhi salam that, you know, do you not know that the Khalif has refused anybody to see Abu Dhar? At that time, Ali alayhi salam rebuked him and said to him, set aside. And may Allah make you head for the fire. Do you know who is Abu Dhar? And do you know his station? And Marwan escaped to Uthman to complain to him about what had happened and how Ali and Hassan and Hussein had disobeyed that, uh, that command and had still gone and given a send-off to Abu Dhar. We know that in the battles of Sifin um, and uh, Jamal, and Nahrawan al Hassan al Hussein participated, but even before that, um, in the times of uh, the Khilafat of Ali alayhi salam, al Hassan al Hussein used to preach and they used to attend uh, the Hajj and preach on behalf of their father uh, to the congregation, teaching them, guiding them, admonishing them about the faith of Islam. And uh, al Hassan alayhi salam was sent by Ali to to Yemen as well as a missionary and to teach the people there about Islam. Now, we know that Ali al-Islam comes to the Khilafa in 35 Hijrah at the death of Uthman who was murdered by, uh, by Muslims. And there are reasons for that that one day, you know, we need to question and ask what is going on. That what had the Khalif done that the Muslims themselves killed their third Khalif. But at the time of the Khilafah of Ali ibn Abi Talib salam, Al Hassan and Al Hussein salam, they moved to Kufa with their father because Imam Ali salam, wanted to move the capital of the Muslim Empire further north from Medina so that it would be in, a, in, a, in an area in Iraq which from where he could monitor the activities of Muawiyah in Sham better. And the whole family moved there. So Al Hassan al Islam was well known to the people of Kufa because he spent several years there. And indeed, at the martyrdom of Ali al Islam, the Kufans first and then Muslims generally gave their allegiance to. Imam Hassan alayhi salam as the Khalif and that is why even amongst non-Shia Muslims he is generally understood to be the fifth Khalif. Now of course Muawiyah was not going to lie down. He had been waiting for this opportunity. He wanted to strengthen his position and he had fought Ali alayhi salam in Sifin without conclusion and it was very important for him now that he saw this opportunity where Ali was out of the way and Al Hassan Ali Salam had come, that to try to gain power and gain it fast. So we find that Muawiyah summons his commanders in Syria, in Palestine, in Transjordan, where he has been building an army, uh, to join him preparing for war. But on the same, at the same time as he's preparing, for a war. He is also negotiating with Imam al Hassan alayhi salam to somehow come to an understanding because he was trying to get Imam Hassan to renounce his claim to the Khilafah. Uh, and the reason for that was Muawiyah knew that to really consolidate his power, it was very important that he gets al Hassan to back down rather than to have some sort of uh, war or where Muslims fight Muslims, especially the army of Sham fighting the army of Hijaz would not be an easy undertaking uh, because he had already 
tried that at Sifin and in Sifin it was just some trickery really that had managed to get them uh, away from sure defeat. Um, and he was not keen to try that again. He wanted to avoid the undesirable consequence of killing Muslims and Muslim killing Muslims. And basically he knew that there would always be doubts about the legitimacy of his claim if he took it by force. And so he was quite desperate to, uh, to get some sort of concession. To this end, he wrote to Imam al-Hasan salam saying that, look, I do not want to have war. I want peace. You write the terms of peace. Anything you write is acceptable to us. In return for which you relinquish your claim to the Khilafah and you know, um, save the blood of the Muslims. Now, that was unacceptable to Imam Hassan al -Islam at that point. However, Imam Hassan al -Islam said, no, we will come out to fight. And he gathered the troops of Kufa and from Basra and from outlying areas in an attempt to put together an army that would fight the army of Sham. Now, the armies did meet, and there were a few inconclusive skirmishes, but there were two or three things that Muawiyah put into play, and the factors that surrounded al Hassan salam that made his position very, very difficult. The first was that the Muslims, especially in Kufa, had been on battle alert for a long time. Within a short space of time, really, they had fought three major encounters, Jamal, Sifin, and Nahrawan. Now there was another battle in place to fight again. And they wanted at all costs to avoid this. So their support for Al-Hasad was very half-hearted. That was the first thing. The second was that Muawiyah cleverly played on this uh, indecision by bribing. This was something that was a phenomenon that happened where the chief generals and the chief uh, tribes that were supporting Imam al-Hassan were approached with bribes and offers of money and other incentives to actually stand back. Now Muawiyah had never been averse to using money for these purposes. But Imam Ali al -Islam and Hassan al -Islam, of course could not do this with Bayt al-Mal like that. But Muawiyah did not have a problem using money to buy people's allegiances. And indeed, we find that for the actual commander of the army of Imam al-Hassan al who was his own cousin, Ubaidullah ibn Abbas, Muawiyah writes a letter to say that I will not insult you by naming figures. Here is a blank letter. You write in it whatever you want, and we will, we will give this to you. And Ubaidullah ibn Abbas, for reasons known to himself, wrote an exorbitant figure, you know, really a uh, huge sum of money, and Muawiyah, without batting an eyelid, said to him, yes, no problem, you can have it. And so we find that Imam Hassan al -Islam is now faced with the horns of a dilemma. On the one hand, his army, especially those who he considered loyal to him, are now deserting him. So there is doubt about the resolve and the loyalty of those who remain. That's the first thing. The second, that the position of Muawiyah is such that there will be losses, huge losses now on both sides. And more important to Imam Hassan alayhi salam, the loss of sincere people, people who he knew had a, still a role to play in consolidating in consolidating the teachings of the Prophet, peace be upon him, and the general fabric of the Muslim, uh, Muslim uh, state. And these all would be killed because they had an allegiance to Al-Hassan ibn Ali and they would fight to the 